Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on and complete, finally, thanks be to God, exercise 3a of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics and we're on page 74 and doing question 27. So this question, to be honest, is um, probably the longest question between this, I'd say, and question 24. But we've done pretty much all the pieces to it, so it's, we're, we're introducing nothing new. Like, for example, if you could do 24, you can definitely do this one. 24, I would say, is probably harder because you're introducing the concepts. Anyway, so it reads, a particle or projectile is fired from a point P on a horizontal plane with initial speed 35 meters per second at an angle A to the plane. Show that if X and Y are the horizontal and vertical distances of the particle from P, then we're given a big long expression, and then if the projectile strikes a small target whose horizontal and vertical distances are P, uh, from P are 40 and 20 meters respectively, find two values for tan A and the time taken to reach the target in each case. That was a mouthful, so I don't know what's going to be like doing it, but let's try. So, uh, as we'll say, like 20, uh, question 26, I'm not going to write out uh, all the bits and pieces. I'm more going to kind of write out a summary. The rest, you can definitely do at this stage. So, uh, let's let's start by doing this, okay? So, uh, where do we start? Where do we start? Okay, we're told that the thing has a, is a speed of 35 meters per second. So, if this is u, alright, and the magnitude of u is equal to 35 and the angle here is A. Of course, when we resolve it, we get two vectors like that. And let's resolve it again. So it's 35 sine A, J hat, and 35 cos A, I hat. All right, so that was pretty straightforward. So uh, once we've done that now, we can. I think we can do the rest pretty quickly. Okay, we're using the same formulas, UT plus a half AT squared, and V is equal to U plus AT. So I'm going to say the following. I'm going to say that U is equal to 35 cos A I hat plus 35 sine A J hat. I'm going to say U sub X is equal to 35 cos A. I'm going to say that S sub X is equal to ut plus a half at squared, and remember that there is no acceleration in the x direction, so it's 35 cos a times t. We know that s sub y has an acceleration gravity, of course, which, as usual, we defined up here as negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So s sub y is 35 sine of alpha t plus half gt squared. All right, now, uh, let's just read a bit of the question again. It shows show that if x and y are the horizontal and vertical distances. So we're saying the, the horizontal distance is equal to x. So that means that s sub x is equal to x. All right. So what else do we know? We know that. I'm going to push this up for you. Yeah, all right. And I'm going to change bios as well. So we know the distance s sub x is equal to 35 cos times a, well cos a times t, and we know that's equal to x. Therefore, if we rearrange that, you get t is equal to x over 35 cos a. I'm just going to note this up in the corner. All right, so uh, now we have an expression for t in terms of x. But if we look at s sub y, we have an alpha, and we have an ex we need, we need uh, to sub in for t. So let's just sub that into t. Excuse me, into s sub y. So s sub y becomes 35 times the sine of alpha multiplied by the time, which is x over 35 cos alpha, or, well, a, I suppose. Excuse me, I'll oh, sure look, I'll change it now. a. Okay, and we had minus 4.9 t squared, so that's x squared over, well, what's 35 squared? Let's find out now. 1, 2, 2, 5. Actually, I'm just going to leave it at 35 squared times cos squared a. Now, I don't know how long it's been since you did question 24, but if you did that, you would actually recognize something happening here. 
first thing is this sine over cos becomes a 10 and the 35s cancel so it's 10 a times x minus um, how do we write this 4.9 x squared over 35 squared times 1 over cos squared a like that all right just as a matter of interest what if I divided um, 1 over 250. In actual fact, this works out here as 1 over 250. So that's that's quite a that's quite easy to write down. So we do that. All right, 1 over 250 like so. So now we have another expression here. Now let's just read the question again. What we're asked to find. We're asked to find uh, we're, the that we're asked to find basically that uh, 250y is equal to 250 times 10 and a big load of other things as well but we're basically getting in our x and our y so we need to manipulate this formula we have just made here we have to manipulate this formula how do we do that well we do it exactly as we've done before right the first thing is 1 over cos squared we know that cos squared or excuse me not cos squared we know that sec squared is equal to 1 plus uh, tan squared and that's equal to 1 over cos squared. Alright, so it's time for us to basically put in the um, put in put that into it. So let's just do this. We have tan A times x minus x squared over 250 times sec squared a so that's tan a times x minus x squared over 250 times 1 plus tan squared a which turns out as um, which turns out as let me see here so tan Like so. And we know that's equal to S sub Y. Alright, so I think we're doing we're doing reasonably well so far. But the other thing as well that we need to notice, we need to bring Y into this. And we're told that S sub Y is equal to Y. So you can see that there. So I'm just going to just get rid of that. Call this Y. So of course, if you multiply across by 250, we get the following. Now, can you see all that? Yep, you can see it there. Now, I'm going to say that tan, I'm just going to call that capital T just for the, just to make things easier. And look, we have a quadratic here. Uh, here, that's T to the naught. That's T to the 1, excuse me, and this would be T to the naught. So, let's just rearrange this. So, we're going to get, uh, how do you write this now? X squared, T squared minus 250 xt and then we have plus 250y plus x squared times t to the naught is equal to naught that's t to the one there yep you can see all that <laughs> let's just check that with what's in the book so we have 250 tan 250 tan ax so that's 250 tan ax, that's there. Um, 250y, where's that? That's there. 1 plus tan squared a, okay. Uh, actually, probably best to go up a good bit here. Let's go up a good bit here. Now, let me have a look. I think I'm after working ahead a good bit. How do, we, how do we just fix this so it looks the same? So that's minus x squared, yes, we have that. Tan squared, x squared, we have that. Yeah, to be honest, that, uh, that's correct. It just looks different. I know I've, I've pushed ahead. I probably should have started manipulating it in around here. but it, Or, sorry, up here, excuse me. 
but I didn't. Either way, look, the answer that that's well, that is that is correct. Okay, so we're doing so we're doing okay so far. Now we're asked uh, the next part. We're told that x will be equal to forty when y is equal to twenty, and that's the that's the very important thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this expression here up to the very top. So you're just going to have to bear with me for a moment as I annihilate all my my work. Right, so we've got that. Re rewrite it. All right. So that's just rewriting what I had there a moment ago. And we know that x will be equal to 40 and y will be equal to 20. Why do we know that? Because it's said in the book, it says, just read it out. If the projectile strikes a small target whose horizontal and vertical distances from P are 40 meters and 20 meters respectively, find two values for tan A. So 40 is for x and 20 for y. So, um, so let's just plug these straight in. Okay, so 40 squared here will be 1600. Minus 250 times 40, that's 10,000, that's quite big. Uh, t to the 1 plus, now, 250, excuse me, 250 multiplied by 20, that's 250y. And add to that x squared, which was, what did we say, x squared was 1600. It's another big number, 6,600. And that's t to the zero. What's that? That's something we're well used to. It's a quadratic. Okay, so can we divide across by things? Sure we can, but to be honest, I'm not going to go about doing that. So let's just solve this using the formula. Minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And I'm going to do it in the exact same way as I always do it. So it's... This plus 1600 is A, minus 10,000 is B, and plus 6600 is C. So it's minus times minus 10,000, plus or minus something over uh, 3200, like so. All right, so I'm going to pull out my calculator again and just do the square root part. So it's B squared, so it's minus, no it's not, it's open bracket, minus 10,000 squared, minus 4 times 1600 times 6600 that gives us a positive, massive positive number, in fact root that we get 7600 if you look at that that's going to give us two positive answers for tan alpha so it's 10,000 plus 7,600 divided by 3,200 giving me quite a small number at 5.5 and 10,000 minus 7,600 divided by 3,200 giving us 3 quarters or 0 0.75 so what that tells us is, is as follows it tells us that tan A is equal to 5.5 and tan A is equal to 0 0.75 all right are they correct let's just find out now 5.5 uh, is correct and 1.42 let me think now or oh, three quarters yeah both of those are correct in fact so both those tans there are correct now what else are we asked in the question and the time taken to reach the target in each case, the time. Now, if, if we go back, um, let me think now, how do we do this? Okay, just note the fact that the, these two tans there, just note that. All right, so we need to find the time taken in each case. So we need an expression for the time. Okay, if we, did we work out an expression for the time at the very start? I'm just trying to think now. 
Oh, we did, because we had to multiply it in. So just, just let me go back to my notes here and what expression we got for time. So in the, in the start of the question, we had t was equal to um, t was equal to x over 335 cos a. We were given that. Oh, we weren't given that, excuse me, we worked that out. So how are we going to use this? We know that we have two values for tan a. Tan a is equal to 3 quarters, so we'll say that, and tan a is equal to 3 quarters, and the other one we had was 11 over 2, which is 5.5. .5. All right, so basically we just need to plug that in. Now, of course, we need cosine. So if uh, for 3 quarters here, if you draw your triangle, you'll find that cos a will be equal to 4 fifths, and for this one here, cos a, using Pythagoras, of course, is going to be 2 over 5 root 5. Now look, if you don't like working in thirds, that's perfectly acceptable. Just write your decimals. So we need to plug both of these answers in here. So t1, I'm going to say, is equal to x, which we said was 40, over 35, times the cos, which was 3 quarters, so 4 fifths, like that. All right, so let's just use my calculator there for that. We have four divided by five, multiplied by 35. That's the bottom. Divide that by 40, by 40 excuse me, divide 40 by that, giving me 10 over seven. All right, which is correct. So that's T1 is equal to 10 over seven. And T2 is equal to 40 over 35 times the cos, which was 5 root 5, or 2 over 5 root 5, excuse me. And when you put that into your calculator, you're going to get a ridiculous third. So I'm just going to put that into a, let's just do that in the calculator. You're going to get a number of 6.38. So the two times you're going to get T1 is equal to 10 over 7, and T2 is equal to 6.38. And both of those are correct. Now, that was, it was long, but it wasn't too bad. But to be quite honest, I'm absolutely delighted to finish that exercise. That was pretty long and painful. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and pass you on to your friends.